Okay, well, welcome back to the last episode of the planning for making the Crossfire into a race car. So, today we're going to be talking about the exterior and aero design, since essentially uh, one of the best things to make your car fast and safe at the same time is to make sure you get balanced aerodynamics. Uh, unfortunately, that's a place that kind of is black magic for most of us because we don't have access to the multi-million dollar wind tunnels. But there are starting to be things that we can do, rule of thumb ideas, and so on and so forth. And we can even do some computer design to check on some of these theories. So, unfortunately for us, the Crossfire kind of has a weird design shape to it that actually promotes quite a bit of lift. That's why they designed that little spoiler thing in the back that comes up at speed to kind of reduce the uh, lift and keep it on the ground. So, dealing with all that type of stuff, we're kind of already wallowing in a slightly unsafe territory so I decided to actually do some CFD as like computational fluid dynamics so it's computer based wind tunnel and I threw the shape of the crossfire a good uh, 3D model of it to at least get a rough baseline and how the wind interacts with that vehicle. So, back over to our computer. What we have here is our three-dimensional model of the Crossfire. It's going to have different little oddities like uh, the engine bay isn't open, this vents they're not open the underside of the car is completely flat and then we have the fact that it's not modeled with a road so essentially the only thing that's going to be relatively accurate is the movement of the air over the top the bottom you're just going to yeah it's just not going to do anything so, this is what our model looks like, and then we can go through and select Oops. <laughs> we want, let's go to mock number. So this shows you the speed of the wind, or the air as it comes up and over. So about Mach 0.3, which would be about 200 miles an hour, that's your yellow. So as you can see, the air as it comes through in yellow hits the front bumper and slows down. As you can tell by this going to purple, blue, out to the green. And then you've got a section here where it slows down, and then a section here where it speeds up. So it's this section at the top, and you see there's this big area of higher speed that actually creates that lift section. Now if we go over here and switch to pressure, this should actually let you visualize where you have the lift factor going. So this blue area is all going to be lift. So essentially, it's like your uh, little spoiler at the back helps to try to prevent a little bit of this but it can only do so much. 
Now, the other thing to look into, since uh, the obvious choice is going to be go for a spoiler in the back, a big wing. But one of the things to think about is the interaction of the air. So we can actually, on this part, we can turn on little stream particles. So we can actually see how the air will bend and move over the car. If we switch to a different axis, you can see exactly how it wants to come over the top of the car. You can see these multiple air currents here coming through. Some off the top, so this is coming straight down straight down the uh, back of it. These other ones a little straighter. So you end up with quite a bit of turbulence back here. So it looks like right back here is a good spot for a wing, but with these different angles of attacks, that's where one of those 3D design wings like what uh, APR is kind of known for. That's where one of those will come in handy because you have, since this is coming down at a sharper angle than over here, this portion of the wing will see a, a bigger area of attack. So if you had the full, let's just use a rough idea of like 10 degrees straight across. So you just have a straight spoiler. These sides over here, you might be seeing 12 degree of air hitting it. This one here, you might actually get closer to the 15 degree. So you could be approaching the stall angle arrow where your drag versus uh, downforce kind of goes out of control. So to keep drag at a minimum, that's where they designed that 3D wing, where this center section of the wing is actually almost flat. So, since we'll have the wing on there, we're definitely going to have to have um, the front component to go with it. So, we're also going to have to build a front diffuser and probably a couple little canards on there just for fun. And if you're wondering how that looks, I kind of created a, another model. This is essentially what I'm thinking we're going for for a design. You'll have kind of that drift style look for the rear wing kind of wanted to get it back out of this weird little turbulent area. And then since this hatch is really weird, there's not a good sturdy structure to attach to. So I wanted to actually do a chassis attachment. Then we'll rig up some sort of something to make it so we can still open the hatch. But it starts to get really neat when you look at you can see the diffuser and the canards, but it starts getting really neat when you go through and show that same, same view. It's like our colors are a little bit off wonky on this, but you can see this blob at the top here isn't as large. And then up here at the front, you can see the design of why a splitter does what it does. All this air that's being slowed down at the front, since the uh, slower air in a way is kind of acts as being heavier 
by having this plate there, it kind of creates that downforce issue. You know, that whole Bernoulli stuff. But the real fun is when we go over to the pressure zone. You can see that that area that we had that was a huge massive bubble, that's actually gone down. And then we've actually generated this positive downforce residing back here on the wing. So like you can definitely tell that that's making an effect. Another fun part is looking at uh, this one. So you can just look at the difference of like the uh, comet tail thing going on. Let's put that on, do this and there. And turn on Y, and turn that off. That one versus this one. I don't know, it's just really fun to play around with a lot of this stuff. If we come back over to these little streamy particle things, let's just there, push it up to there. You can actually see a change in how the flow comes off of the vehicle. Like if you remember back over on this one, you can see how the stream is coming down here and this one's coming straight up there. When you get the spoiler involved or the big wing involved, this tends to straighten out and become a smoother transition. So that's probably going to greatly, greatly help out. But essentially we all know that the re big rear wing and splitter will do what we want it to but the area that I actually created this CFD thing for is to see where on this hood you actually have low pressure because as you can tell with the down here on the windshield with the cowl. This is a high pressure zone. So it actually, uh, that's how cowl hoods work, is they have that opening back here and then air will rush into the engine bay. But what I wanted is vents on the hood to allow air that's coming through the radiator escape out of the hood because we're probably going to have to have just because uh, we're probably going to have a flat bottom to the to the crossfire it's already relatively flat to begin with so if we enclose it up a little bit more there's going to be less place for the air inside the engine bay to escape so I wanted to put vents on the hood somewhere. And by making this CFD uh, thing, it allows us to see exactly where we need to stop the vent. So like you, you've seen on many, many cars where there's just the little scalloped hole up here in the hood but it's like I wanted to make sure that that indeed was doing what it was supposed to by letting the air from the radiator escape and promoting it to do so instead of like if you looked I think it was 
uh, Rob Freddy's uh, Corvette. It's got holes in the hood that was supposed to be, I'm, I would guess it was supposed to be for extracting air, but just the design of them just shows that air is just being rammed into that engine compartment. So it might not be a very good design, but I'm not an aerodynamic urologist, so. <laughs> but anyways, what does that actually make for our vehicle, the Crossfire? Well, I've actually made a three-dimensional rendering of what it's probably going to look like in its first iteration. So what I am. So essentially we got louvered hood vents here. This will help extract air out of there. I kind of wanted to keep these little lines in the hood so I didn't want to cut vents into them just because that's kind of was the style of Chrysler in that time frame. So a good little raised louver that will actually create a little bit of its own reasoning for getting air out of there. So things like going from high pressure to low pressure and the stagnant air in the engine bay will be high pressure and even that little tilt up on these vents will actually create a small low pressure zone. It'll kind of almost create lift here but it'll be so minuscule that it doesn't really do anything but help extract heat. Then we're also depending on what we find behind the fender we're probably going to need to put a screen in this apron piece and actually make this side vent a functional vent for removing air from the wheel well because we're probably going to gut the fog lights and duct that for a cooling duct for the brakes. Now of course we got our big old wing in the back and inside we got ourselves a big old V8 just sitting there <laughs> But we can go over to another, whoops, not this one, get out of there. And if we go over to view and say we want this one, this allows us to see the, get a big motor in there, should fit. We may have to go down the road of a dry sump style, but we'll worry about that once we get around to mocking, mocking it up. And that'll essentially be the car. Now the it's like at some point I want to start playing around with carbon fiber. So in its final iteration we might be looking at something like this carbon fiber fenders and hood and window surround maybe even the uh, bumper cover side skirts this would probably lighten up the front end enough that there would be no difference between having the big v8 versus a six just on the carbon fiber lightning itself so, ultimately, that's what we might end up with, but most likely we'll have this little guy for the start of it, just so we can have some fun and figure it out as we go and base it off of there.
So, this is essentially my whole design thought process. So you kind of know what I'm doing and trying to do going forward. So expect it to uh, take a while because this isn't going to happen overnight, especially when I'm just a one-man crew, no one to help me. Everything's just me, myself, and I. So <laughs> things will take time. So if you made it this far through the series, thanks for watching. And make sure to subscribe and you'll actually get to see this come to life. And hopefully look about the way I made it in the computer program. So, I will see you guys later.